colors, and sounds. They play a significant role in understanding the world around us using our senses. Hence it is vital to understand them first in order to understand the nature, since we significantly depend on colors. Let's understand the electromagnetic spectrum. We see colors from red through yellow, green and blue. But there are colors beyond our limits, let's start discovering it from the middle. The yellow. If we decrease the wavelength of yellow by 60 millionths of a millimeter, the color changes from yellow to green. If we further decrease the wavelengths, the color changes from green to blue and then to violet. Our visible range ends from there, but not the spectrum. Beyond this, the spectrum will change to ultraviolet. This is how the nature made us blind and give vision to others. If we go beyond what insects and birds can see, we will reach to the world of X-ray. If we go way beyond the X-rays, the much shorter and the most energetic waves can be found in this realms like gamma rays. We have now reached the known end of the spectrum and only the mind can sense beyond this limit. Let's go back where we have started and start discovering the other side. The longest side of the electromagnetic spectrum. Red has the longest wavelength that we can see. Right after the red we can find the infrared. If we see infrared, we would see things like this. Soon after infrared we can find far infrared. If you see far infrared, you would understand the world in a different way. After far infrared we can find the waves that are measured in millimeters. The microwaves. After this the wavelength will be from one meter to few kilometers. Though these are radio waves we can still create images of the universe using these VLAs. These are the stunning images that have been rendered by them. As humans, we have developed extreme devices to go beyond our vision. But yet to be discovered, as we still can understand the things that are only compatible with our five senses. However, let's see how it happens when it comes to hearing. You have now seen the limits of your senses in this world. Same as the vision, the audio spectrum is also small for humans. Now let's see how the understanding spectrum of humans with main senses. Let's change the video clip. What you will understand is not always correct when our senses clash. Take a look at this. Laurel. 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 This is called the McGurk effect and is a good example to show how easy to change our perceptions by fooling the senses. However, let's see how our ancestors understood the universe without the vulnerabilities of these senses with compared to the current sensor-based observations. Earth Hiding all riddles in a blurry mirage under the wings of fascination, it glides through the space and make humans feel edgy all time. Hubble. Spending over 1.5 billion US dollars is an evidence to prove how curious we are in hunting unknowns beyond the horizons. Sending stunning images around the universe for three decades yielding over 1.4 million observations. This masterpiece orbits only 340 miles above the Earth. It helps us understand many things by looking at others as we are almost blind on seeing our own galaxy. However, let's take a ride for past to see how our ancestors had seen the world and the surroundings without all these sophisticated technologies. 
most importantly how they were trying to pass the knowledge to their future generations that they have gained from their ancestors through experience-based gradual learning. Rather than the latest eyeballing-based learning, this method cultivates the inner peace as they knew that the mind dominates all in nature. Asia. We will glide around to see how we can find evidence about their understanding about universe. Let's start it from a small island called Sri Lanka or Ceylon. This paradise island is one of the few other places on earth that we can find most mysterious things about universe and other worlds. In a small island like this why would they take such an effort to build this massive structures? And why would they design these extraordinary monuments in such an uncommon and remote locations? Are these sculptures and images trying to tell us an untold story about something that had been known to them? Let's go around the world and discover other places as well to reveal this. India, the birthplace of great humans. Mahabodhi Temple the most sacred place for Buddhists around the world. With a unique shape it make a relationship to other temples around the world in a completely new way. Temple Kailash. It is considered one of the most remarkable cave temples in the world because of its size, architecture and sculptural treatment. Whoever constructed it in 760 AD the idea behind creating was made him to believe that it is worth it to remove 200,000 tons of rock to preserve it. Cambodia, the iconic place of East Asia. The Borobudur Temple. Constructing a temple from over 1.6 million blocks is not a simple task. Hence the intention behind of constructing such a massive structure must not be a simple one. Among these and many other monuments the Nik Pien. The Entwined Serpents Temple in Cambodia is another important piece that need to fix the puzzle. The Tibetan sand mandala is also another piece of the puzzle that cannot be missed out in our context. Mandalas, which are cosmic maps charting the succession of initiations from the historical Buddha 2600 years ago to present day, are a crucial aspect of most Buddhist traditions. They are used to guide practitioners to enlightenment and are usually painted or woven on scrolls and huge wall hangings and placed in the meditational halls of temples. Let's decode the riddle. We have gathered few pieces of information so far and it is time to read the ancient manuscripts called the Atakatha, and others to map these pieces according to the constraints. Whenever we go close to these great stupas it deliberately created us to realize that we are considerably small in size. And the curiosity drives us through the historical data to believe that these skyscraping stupas are three-dimensional mandalas in a way. The manuscripts also strongly suggest that these stupas have the characteristics of the building blocks of the universe called Lokada too, and are also referred as Sakwala, Chakrawata, Chakawala, or in simple terms the galaxy. It is in that sense where the richest understanding of these monuments occur. Hence, let's lessen the story of stupas. The Borobudur Temple. Covering more than 27,000 square feet of area. Holding over 1.6 million blocks of andesite. Raising 100 feet from the ground. Holding the richest experiences of a calm mind. This magnificent monument stand with nature for many years for the purpose of passing the experiences to the future generations. Let's match the structure with the scripts and experience the galaxy or the Chakawala as the way they experienced it. Same as the Chakawala. The Borobudur is constructed on three levels. First a pyramid-shaped base, replete with seven square terraces, two basement levels and another five levels of terraces. Second the trunk of a cone with three circular shaped platforms. And on the upper level, 
a grand monumental stupa. The seven square terraces of the monument match the seven golden breakwater-like great mountains that can be found in the manuscripts. And also the space between the walls of the barriers match the seven seas as mentioned in Supara Jataka. These can be found in the Tibetan mandalas as well. Not only that, they can also be found at the footprint of the Lord Buddha seen in temples around the globe. If we make a model of it, it would be something that has seven golden barriers around it, and there are seven seas in between them. If we consider the other standalone stupas. The great outer wall denotes this. Let's now go to the middle sections of Borobudur. The great stupa and the platform right below it. This represents the Mount Mahamiru. The X-shaped golden structure which situated in the middle of the Lukadatu and the lower realms of gods called Chattamaharajika accordingly. This lower part is called Devadukotawa and other stupas. According to the evidences that we gathered let's render the, the whole structure of the Lukadatu. It is surrounded by the great wall called Sakwalagala, and its basement is referred as the earth. This gigantic earth is covered with a great ocean. In the middle of the ocean there is a great mountain called Sinaru, or Mahamiru. Around Mahamiru there are seven barriers and seven seas. Somewhere in between these barriers and the outer circular rocky mountains there can be four human worlds found in a Lukadatu. These materials are not like the ones we see with our senses. These are fine material worlds and can be fully seen to the purified minds or the equipments that go beyond the limits of the sensory system of the humans. Let's start discovering things mentioned in the sutras and various other scripts one by one. If we start from the center, the Mount Mahamiru, it is mentioned as the example of stability. The top of this mountain is called Tawathiansa or Suraluka. And the right opposite side or the bottom end of Mahamiru there is another world similar to the Suraluka. It is called Ashuraluka. It is situated in the bottom of the ocean. And the gods live in both the realms are titans. In the middle sections and the mountain ranges of Chakawala there various creatures and gods can be found including the mermaids who lives in the Sedanta seas closer to the Mahamiru. As the whole range is ruled by the gods live in the top of the mountain let's start from there. This is the realm of the god called Sakra or Zeus. In the center of this world we can find his mansion called Vijayantha Prasada. In the southwest side of Vijayantha Prasada the sermon hall called Sudama can be found. And in the northeast there's a magnolia tree called Kalparuksha the wish-giving tree. In the four directions there are delightful four parks with twin ponds. Four peaks can also be found in each sub-direction. Let's go down to discover the next level of Mount Mahamieru. Down below Thorthinsa, we can see the pond called Anavatapta. Around Anavatapta, there are five mountains. Starting from north we can find Sudasana Kota, Chitra Kota, Kala Kota, Gandhamadana Kota and Kailash Kota. They are made of gold, crystal, soil and silver. Under the rock called Nanda Mulana in Gandhamadana Kota, there are three caves, they are Silver Cave, Crystal Cave and Golden Cave. In front of the Golden Cave there is a special tree called Manjushaka. This is the place where Pakkika Buddhas live. And also from here to the downstreams of Anavatapta four types of gods can be found in each section, naming Naga, Gandhava, Yaka, and Kambanda. There are one trillion gods live in each section of Mahamieru. They are being ruled by four gods called Virapaka, Datarata, Vaisravana and Viruddha. Mount Mahamieru is surrounded by seven rings of golden mountains. They are Aishadhara, Karavika, Sudasana, Nimindara, Vinataka, Asvakana and the closest one is called Ugandara. It holds Mahamiru with maximum stability and also bridging the Vivatha rivers of Anavatapta that circulate around Mahamiru to reach the far ends of the galaxy. After this the realm of Chattamaharajika Devas can be found and they are facing to Mahamiru. As mentioned earlier this four gods called, Virapaka, Datarata, 
Vaisrawana and Viruda, command the four groups of gods called Naga, Gandawa, Yaka, and Kambanda. As we live in the south corner of the universe which is ruled by Viruda, the god of Naga let's see it from that angle. In this section the downstreams of Anavatapta is called Kala Ganga. Around this river's four types of lions can be found, they are Thruna, Kala, Pardu and Kashara. There are other creatures as well, among them elephants, horses, serpents and birds are special as they are mentioned in various sutras like Kanala and Chattanta. When the river falls from the mountain it is called Akasa Ganga. Akasa Ganga falls to a rock called Thiagala and forms a steep underground stream from Thiagala Pokharania. The rest of the river flows towards the sea and it is called Bahala Ganga. After this the river is called Kanbeganga, and when it turns to an underground river called Umanganga, it flows towards earth, passing Ugandhara, Aishadhara, Karavika, Sudasana, Nimindra, Vinataka, and Aswakana the seven mountains and Prakoti, Churamali, Agnimali, Dadimali, Kushimali, Nalamali and Wadarbamukha the seven seas it reaches to Himalayan mountain range. After hitting the rock called Vindaya the river breaks and comes out as five rivers called Ganga, Yamuna, Akirawati, Sarabu and Manhi. Then it flows to the ocean around Indian continent. Close to the rock there is a huge tree and this is why the planet Earth is called Jambudipa. Jambudipa is a part of human realm and it is located in the southern side of Mount Mahamiru. Humans can be found in three other planets. In east side of Mahamiru, the planet Porawida in north, the planet Uchurukuru and finally in the west, the planet Aparagoyana. These humans are similar in shape but there are huge differences in behavior, size and the lifespan. The whole galaxy rests on top of water that keep the floating contents gather with gravity and it is 480,000 yojanas in depth. The water rests on dense air that balance the pull of water and stables the whole universe. This is 960,000 yojanas in depth. As we now understand. This is called Lukada 2 and a cluster of 1000 Lukada 2 is called the small chiliacosm or in other words, a thousandfold minor world system. In a small chiliacosm there are thousand Mahamirus, thousand Tawatinsas, 4,000 human realms and so on and so forth. A collection of 1,000 times 1,000 world systems or 1,000 squared is a thousand fold to the second power middling world system called Vizahasimajuma Lokadatu or in other words medium dikiliacosm. A medium dikiliacosm vibrates during the birth of a Mahabodhisattva and it contains 10,000 Mahamirus, 10,000 Tawatinsas, 40,000 human realms and so on and so forth. The largest grouping, which consists of 1,000 cubed world systems, is called the Tisahasi Mahasasi Lokadatu, or Great Trichiliacosm. The Tathagata, if he so wished, could effect his voice throughout a Great Trichiliacosm. He does so by suffusing the trichiliacosm with the radiance of his single hair, at which point the inhabitants of those world system will perceive this light, and then proceeds to extend his voice throughout that realm. And the subject range of the Lord Buddha starts beyond this limit. And this for all ten directions up, down and other eight directions. There are indefinite number of galaxies in the universe for each direction. But, all of them fall under three realms and they are Avakasaluka, Sanskaraluka and Sathwalaka. These are called three worlds and as the Lord Buddha fully understood these realms like no other the Lord Buddha is called Thiluguru. <laughs>